this isn't meant racist whatsoever. My mother would be like, Oliver! You, oh, you have to helmets for special needs people. They're fleece lined. Bada bing, bada boom. Where the hell did that come from? Of course, I think it's really clever. And then she freaks out for a couple of hours after. No backup camera today. Got my own car back after I uh, became a real man last night. All right, here's one absolute brain teaser that you have to work out today. If a hippo cared about oral hygiene, would it brush those big ones at the front side to side and go up, or would it brush them up and down? Just It's just food for thought. All right, um, a couple thoughts. Which one are you? Do you, Are you a busy person or a non-busy person? Do you reply to text immediately, or does it take you a few days, or do you just not reply to text? Got a theory here. I either reply to a text immediately or I don't reply for like three to five business days. There's no in between. Sorry. Oh gosh. I'm sorry. We're at the tail end of this. Where was I? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> All right, let me just let me just collect myself after I've just coughed up a lung or like whatever that was called. Uh, yeah, do you reply immediately or do you wait three to five business days? Now, for me, if it's a if I'm in between tasks, I'll reply immediately, regardless of whether it's something I have to think about or not. But if I'm in the middle of something and it's a text that requires some kind of thought, it's going to have to wait three to five days, I'm afraid. And on one hand, you could say, yeah, that's pretty selfish. Like, what if the other person needs an answer? Yeah, that also depends. Like, I'm not going to, you know, if they need an answer pretty quickly, I'm not going to wait three to five days. But if it can wait, then I'm going to prioritize that text decision against what I already have in the workflow. I think, are these two trucks racing? You bad mans. Bad men. Bad men. I don't know. I also saw some uh, a TikTok this morning, a girl talking about the difference in money considerations between someone like Cardi B and Emma Chamberlain. Now, this is something I've been thinking about, but Cardi B, she likes to keep an eye on her money. She likes to know where things are going. She likes to... Yeah, see where her money's going. Whereas someone like Emma Chamberlain does not want to care about money. And I think the thought process behind each of those was that Cardi B cares because she hasn't come from money and she has lots of different uh, outflows. Like from what I understand, she looks after a lot of her family and whatnot and came from poverty. Whereas Emma Chamberlain uh, seems to get overwhelmed with looking at money and bank accounts and like seeing you know, money going out versus money coming in. And you see it from both angles, but for my wife and I, she likes to check it every now and again. I check it maybe once a week. Now, yes, you could say that's quite a privileged position to be in, but my wife and I have been salaried for the past eight years. And then when she became a stay-at-home mum, obviously that salary dropped. And so we just like, reduced our spending like we just stopped buying the additional things that we didn't need now my opinion is i don't want to focus on money whatsoever i mean like that's stupid you need to know where your money's going and do i like as long as there's enough money coming in and my wife and i aren't spending ridiculously we know our general spend month to month on food, going out, doing different things, buying different things. Neither of us are extravagant in the slightest. And so there's a trust between us that neither of us are gonna be overspending. So there's no need, there's nothing, there's no factor that's gonna change that makes one of us need to look at the bank statement. And also, if you have 24 hours in a day, Eight of those are spent sleeping, so you have 16 hours left. Those 16 hours, like for me, 
a split between working out, working, spending time with Rugi, spending time with Shay. You know, and then a few other things like, you know, speaking with family, um, something that I may want to do for fun, okay? Why would I choose to take time out of those things to spend it looking at money? I mean, the ideal scenario for me is that I'm not at that place yet, but I pay someone to, you know, check it on a daily or a weekly basis to tell me if I'm getting closer, if I'm overspending or doing something like that. I'm not a professional with, you know, I'm decent with money, but I'm not a professional with money coming in or out. So why wouldn't I pay a professional who can deal with that? Like that's the goal, that's the place to be at. Because money is just a, it's a facilitator of life. If money's no issue, you're gonna do the things, you're gonna spend your time doing the things you want to do, right? Whereas if money is an issue, you're constantly thinking about, do I have enough money to do this? Do I have what I need to be able to do the things I want to do? And it's, it's draining, it's life sucking. I mean, yeah, like my wife and I are in a place where we don't just go and make a hundred dollar purchase on a whim because we want something. Like we know not to do that. We know that, you know, money's not in a place to just go and spend that kind of money willy nilly. But if, you know, you find yourself in a position where you, you have those impulses and you don't or can't control them, then yeah, you should be checking your money. Like maybe this is quite telling too. The idea of someone going to buy something and their card getting declined and they don't know that they don't have money in their account or they're negative in their account is crazy to me. Now you can look at that and say, that's yeah, but you're just out of touch. You don't realize that some people live paycheck to paycheck. But I'm looking at that saying, that's okay. Like if you live paycheck to paycheck, like that is what it is, but why aren't you checking the money you have before you go into make purchases? That tells me that you're not thinking about how much money you have. You're just thinking about buying the things you want or need and not thinking about the thing that facilitates that. Yeah, I feel quite strongly about that and there are probably nuances and whatnot, but I just think going somewhere and having your card declined is a situation that you can easily avoid and should be avoiding. Speaking of that, and what a privileged position, uh, we're gonna play some Fortnite with Seb this morning. It's been a crazy week. I haven't really taken any time off for being sick, and I feel like it's a little bit deserved. And then I'll give some, my wife some time this afternoon too, so I'll look after Rugi. Bada bing, bada boom. This is future Oliver who doesn't, we're just rambling right here, but I'm gonna put the sauna tent back together. What I, have, what I thought to say was, I looked at, I forgot to mention, shut up Oliver and hurry up. I, I do, look. I forgot to mention my metrics from the sleeping from the night quill. So I've inserted them here and I'm looking at, hello doggies. Oh yeah, we got that dog back from her mother, I guess. Do that, come here, come here, okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'll do a screenshot so you can see. It says I didn't actually go to sleep until 9.53. I don't, that doesn't make sense because I made a note at 8.44 that I was falling asleep, like I had fallen asleep while we were watching The Office. I don't know if it says 9.53 because somewhere between 8.44 and 9.53, I went and got Ruger from his room and brought him up to our bed because he's sick. Uh, yeah, because I was... I, was, I can't remember what time I filmed the video. I'll insert that as text right here when I figure it out. But it looks like I had a decent sleep. Eight hours and 45 minutes. It said I didn't wake up until 6.40. That's not right. This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Because I actually... If, what if I look at screen time that day? Because I 
I know it's wrong, but I check my phone when I wake up. Here we go, screen time. It would have been Monday, no. The first. What day is it today? I'm sorry. Oh, so yesterday, literally just yesterday, so Friday. See all web and activity from what day? The day, today. Now, how do I change the day? Here we go. All right. So yeah, it shows just a screenshot here. Monday, 27th of November. That's not right. Here we go. So it actually shows that I was looking at my phone somewhere about 4 a.m. And then I, I don't know why, I checked it at 1 a.m. I must have just woken up. This sleep monitor is just absolutely useless. So this was useless. Uh, yeah. This was useless. <laughs> Carry on with the video and I, I will see you again later as I package this up. See, see you soon, sweetie. <laughs> I was about to start planning out the day four, day four of the sauna vid that I kind of mentioned last night. And I just got a message through for this video I have planned, which is for this self-flying drone. I mean, I'll just show it to you. It's um, this. I, I did set it in flight in yesterday's video. I'm not gonna turn it on because the dog goes nuts for it and then she freaks out for a couple of hours after so but actually it's a, it's really cool and this will be the drone that i will take on shoots that i need a drone shot for but don't want to have to control a drone properly um <clears throat> but i this this video i really like actually so before i rub this off it's going to come out early next week i'm thinking if we get approval but um it, so I take it through the whole story process where I'm playing hide and seek. So I'm playing against the drone, but the drone's not playing by the rules because it's following me and it's not counting to 10 and allowing me time to hide. And I'm not sure what to do. And I end up coming to a point where I flip the rules and I then break the rules so that I can get away from it. <sighs> but this, this point in the story where I pivot into like, overcoming the challenge is that I put on a camo blanket. Now I, I hope that people get it in the video because I think it's really clever. Of course I think it's really clever. But camo, being obviously camouflage, can't see me, which performs two things. One, it's meant to be that that's going to allow me to not be seen by the drone. And two, it shows how good the drone is at tracking a subject. But to bring in the camo blanket, that's just like a weird out of left field thing. As like, oh, I couldn't get away from the drone, so I put on my camo blanket. And you're kind of like, where the hell did that come from? So I featured the camo blanket earlier on in the video where it's cold outside and I'm looking through the instructions on how to change the settings of the drone. And I, that's where I put the camo blanket on. And so I show that I have it with me, which this also performs a second role of calling out how simple the instructions are. I think this might be one of my most clever videos. <laughs> Although it's like a stupid concept, I think it's quite clever. And I can't, it, it seems at the moment, like where I think they're clever, it seems like people, maybe, you know, just because I'm not seeing people comment it, but I don't know if people are seeing all of the things that go in and link up. Like these are the, like I read lots of uh, bits on, I don't read lots of them, I see them every now and again on Quora or Reddit where people will pick out bits that happen in movies that were actually super clever but 99% of the people didn't recognize. And so I think one of the cool things will be that if you're watching these vlogs, you'll see the inside look at the TikTok videos. So when you go and watch it, you'll be able to be like, oh my gosh, that is so clever. Or you'll be like, yeah, I mean, he thinks that's clever, but it's stupid. All right, anyway, the reason I brought that up is because 
they would like me to make one change to the video, which is to add um, a bit like some captions on screen or a talking bit at the end of the video that talks through the main features of the drone. And essentially some, well, excuse me, some other parts that are selling the drone. But I'm pretty upfront that my content isn't about, like the goal of the content isn't to sell to people. The goal of the content is to entertain so that the viewer, while entertained, can may get exposure to the product and get an idea of how they can use it themselves. I just, like, I don't want to sell to people. I would like people to purchase something if they like the way that I've used it. All right. So I'm just going to add a caption at the end, which is like, check the link in bio. It's very nonchalant, but just letting people know where the link is. All right, so day four uh, of the sauna. And um, I don't know why I'm not just using the script. I'll just show you how the script works. I'll tell you like the things that I've been thinking about. Let's open chat. Let me, I don't want to like at this point, I don't want to give away the script that I use because it's my whole video formula. And at the moment I'm not at a point where I want people copying what I do, you know? Okay, I, I don't want to gatekeep as such, but that's what makes my content unique and possibly it's my creativity behind it. But so let me copy this and I'll show you what I adapt in part of the script, which you can then see. So give me one second though. Woven into the narrative. Okay. Um. Yes, then, so I'll share my screen on this section. So, the, so I've got the first line, which is create the script. And then I explain what the protagonist does. So, uh, this was obviously what I used for the um, hoverboard hide and seek video. Why are you so lopsided? Okay. Use it has been using a at home sauna tent for the past three days. Day one used it inside but struggled after 10 minutes and had to get out. So here I'm explaining what I did in episode one, two, and three to give it some context for creating this one. This is like the background. And then I give it some more information in a second. Day two. What happened on day two? I made it. Oh, that's right. Used it but struggled after 10 minutes and had to get out because I was getting dehydrated. Day two, I brought water in with me. Oh wait, no, day two, the steamer I had broke, so I had to get 
a new wallpaper steamer, which made it way hotter than day one. So I brought water in, iced water in with me that I also poured over myself, poured over myself to stay cool. Day three, it snowed, so I set the sauna up outside and finished off by doing a snow angel, snow angle, by doing a snow angel, but uh, that was a bad idea. On day four, I want to highlight the use of natural, what do they call it, essential oils, of an essential oil to relieve my congestion. On day four, I want to highlight the use of essential oil to relieve my congestion and um, I'm thinking about the state of the sauna and just how like ruined it is. Here's a clip I filmed for TikTok earlier. I also show that the sauna is so broken that I can't can't use it again and will need to try a real sauna like all the Finnish people in the comment section have been suggesting. I also learn the sauna I've been using is wet heat versus dry heat, which it is apparently worse. Yeah, let's see what that spits out, shall we? Yeah, so it's quite nice that now I can just give it that input, give this script that input, and it can create a like, like an outline of a script, give me a script idea. And I could create like five, ten of these, read through them all and get more ideas and then create my own version based off of that. The, um, the hide and seek one, one of the things I asked it to consider was battery level as a talking point. And it, was, it made a really cool script. I didn't end up using it, but the battle was against the battery level of the hoverboard challenging the drone battery and like that added a new dimension to the script which is actually really cool okay so the story would go with whatever the hook is so you have a, a recount of day one and then you have the point of no return sweating like a desert i say i need water Wait. No, okay, so what it's doing here is talking through, wait, I never really thought about doing this like this. One sec, I need to sniff like a sausage. My mother would be like, Oliver, blow your nose. My mother would be like, Oliver, blow your nose. It doesn't have quite the same effect when I do it the second time, is it? Okay, so this hasn't added in anything about the congestion. Yeah. 
I'm wondering, do, so this is taking it more the direction that the majority of the video would be talking about my previous experiences. Do I want that? Like I kind of think yes, because if I go to a real sauna, I want to talk about my experience of being in a real sauna versus being in a real sauna and talking about my previous experiences, right? And yeah, I guess, The, so adapt the script. So the real reason for trying a day for in the at home broken sauna instead of just going to a real sauna is to <coughs> uh, deal with my sickness and congestion with the essential oils. Yeah, because I think it would be, I think this is a good opportunity to uh, bring up the importance of not going into public places when you're sick. Okay, so set up one, just talking about day one. So point of no return is using the wallpaper steamer. The catch was moving it outside in the snow and I had a chilly snow angel. I'm not sure how I feel about that. There's no process section. Idiot GPT. I like talking to chat GPT because it, it tells me that I'm right all the time. It's like having an obedient wife. <laughs> Don't know where that came from. I don't really think like sexist jokes are that funny. I, I mean, speaking of sexist jokes, I mentioned this in a previous video, the whole Matt Reif situation, whether you like his form of humor or not, let's just say it's dark humor. Him putting up a story uh, and linking his apology to a, a website of helmets for special needs people, whether you find that funny or not, is just amazing branding. For someone who wants to be in that line of comedy is amazing branding. You, like, I don't think you can knock that. And if you are knocking that, then I just don't think you can see past branding. Uh, sorry, I don't think you can see past your opinion of his style of comedy. Okay, here we go. So, day one full of excitement. Fast forward, here we go. Fast forward through a sweaty disaster and freezing snow angel, we're at day four, cool, okay. After my wallpaper steamer turned sauna nearly cooked me on day two and day three left me as a snowman, I'm not sure I need this. I was determined to make day four work. Why? Because I was stuffed up and desperate for relief. Okay, yes. because I was stuffed up and desperate for relief. And I think at this point, I'm already in the sauna, or... Hmm. Not sure, because I still need to put the like essential oils in the steamer. But here's the twist. My sauna was now as functional as a chocolate teapot, and me, a sniffly, sneezy mess. Okay, I like... I might change it from a functional chocolate teapot to something about a penis and erection joke because I find that funny, I guess. <laughs> Process. 
which is like the main meat. So I get this idea to use essential oils to clear my con congestion. I'm thinking if the sauna's broken, why not just inhale the oils directly? There I was, huffing eucalypt, <laughs> huffing. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I would put at that point, I would like jump out, go get the essential oils and then put them into the steamer. But nope, just by luck, the oils made my eyes watery, water more than an onion chopping marathon. Then it hit me, the sauna might be kaput, but what about a steamy shower with those oils? Not exactly a finished sauna experience, but hey, it just might do the trick. Hmm. Post shower, smelling like a minty forest, I realized something. While my sauna dreams might have fizzled, sometimes you just gotta improvise. And maybe, just maybe, those fins with the real saunas are onto something. Next time, I'm leaving the sauna. No, next time I'm going to a real sauna. Okay, so let's start, let's start writing this out. Okie dokie artichokey. My pen is over here. So we have our hook. Um, I think the setup want has to be right, like ease congestion. Okay, the point of no return is that I make it as hot as possible. Make as hot as possible. And the catch is that I tried suggestions of dripping water on myself. Oh, instead of dripping, maybe spraying. I'm putting a line under it as if it's a slash for dripping or because <laughs> I can't do it to the side. Tried suggestions of spraying dripping cold water on myself, uh, but felt like temporary discomfort. <coughs> um, so, look up other options, look up other ways to ease congestion. The result is um, get sun's uh, essential oils. All right, so then I, so I, I leave the sauna, go and get them. Uh, add to steamer, like add the oils to the steamer. And then like I could just look up ways to ease congestion and put oils in the steamer, but I quite like the adventure aspect of it that I have to, like I'm nice and hot, and I have to leave to go and get the oils and then come back. So I add them to the steamer and w 
wait for them to take effect. So while wait for, I don't know, to take effect, I search up real sauna. Sauna, uh, because realized I'd been sold a dupe, which is uh, wet heat versus dry heat, right? Um, and then what are my climactic choices? Uh, was it worth staying in, question mark? Was it worth staying in? And what is a, ban a good banana? How do you make dry heat? No, 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 no. I don't know what I'm saying there. <coughs> All right, so I'm at my lowest point because I have been sold the wrong thing and I've been using wet heat versus which, and dry heat is what you would get in a real sauna. So I question if it's even worse staying in, I should just get out, but Like when you relieve congestion, does your nose run? It does, doesn't it? Nose began to run. Wait. Oil was working. My nose began to run. I, I won't. Tempted to make like a, a black guy running from cops, an American cops joke. That would be too much, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, I made another video, the magnet fishing video that I referenced yesterday. I made a joke in there about how Americans love their cops. And the number of people that didn't seem to get it as a joke. Um, like, I actually, I believe, like, I think police, this is getting deep now, isn't it? Police in the United States, it, I get a weird feeling over here. Like, I believe the police um, have a very important role. And I would never defund the police but there's a weird power dynamic with the police here. Like when I see them on the roads, I've only had a few interactions with the police, but when I see them on the roads, I don't see police and think, oh good, they're here to protect me. I see they're watching me for, to do something wrong. They're watching, waiting for me to do something wrong, which is weird. I don't feel that way in the UK at all. Like, I, I really do feel like the police in the UK are there to protect. Um, and I haven't really had any specific run-ins that would make me 
say, yes, I firmly believe that the police in the United States are here to catch you out. I would just say that it kind of seems that way from my small experiences. I didn't distinguish between those very well, but I definitely don't mean, I don't mean the same thing, even if it did mean the same thing, come across as the same thing. Oils were working, and my nose began to run. And, but I learned to be okay with that. So learn to be okay with the discomfort, discomfort, discomfort. Like this should really be part of the finale. But I learned to be okay with the discomfort. And held out the 20 minutes. The 20 minutes as I looked for a real sauna to visit for day five. Yeah, I like that. All right, so I want to ease my congestion so I make it as hot as possible. Being so hot, I tried suggestions like dripping or spraying cold water on myself, but I f it just felt like temporary discomfort instead of cooling me down. I looked up other ways to ease congestion, so I got my son's essential oils. I added them to the steamer, and while I waited for them to take effect, I searched up real sauna because of comments. I searched up real sauna because from comments I realized I'd been sold a dupe and this was wet heat versus dry heat you get from a typical sauna. I questioned if it was even worth staying in, but the essential oils were working as my nose began to run, like faster than something. But I learned to be okay with the discomfort and held out the 20 minutes as I looked for a real sauna to visit for day five. Like, I like that. I like that a lot. So my discomfort is, sorry, my flaw is avoid discomfort. Discomfort. Strength is embrace. You, oh, you have to be um, to improve, but I learned but I learned to improve. We must go outside our comfort zone. That's a nice message, isn't it? Embrace this comp for it. Oh, my handwriting is so bad, sorry. All right, then I think, oh wait, where have I put in here? How, bro I guess I don't need to talk about how broken the sauna is. They can see it, can't they? You'll be able to see it in the video. All right, cool. Let's go and film it. I do that. <clears throat> Pod vlog quickie. Uh, that doesn't work because I'm on the wrong day. Um, so I, yeah, let's use this one here. I finished the video kind of abruptly. I was meant to record another bit, but I ended up shooting the rest of this sauna video, editing it and getting it all done before, like just after four o'clock. 
But I was asking my wife, like we went to get Qdoba that evening, and I, I finished working like downstairs in my office at four o'clock, but I still had like the, the auto captions to add on top, and then I needed to add a couple of screenshots. But they were things that I didn't need to be alone in my office for. I could do them while chilling out with Shay or like while we planned out dinner. So, <clears throat> as I was doing that, it got me thinking, I was, I asked my wife, I was like, you know how I live by this like way of life of whatever I'm doing, I do it 100%. She said, yes, of course. I said, well, do you find that, like I say that to, to, what the frick? To like think that I'm really good and that I actually live by that because like in a moment like this, her and I were driving and I'm doing these like slight edits in the car just because there's like rogies just chilling in the back and we're trying to go and get food. I said, do you feel like I just kind of fake this lifestyle? And she goes, no. Uh, I look at like times like this as the anomalies, the times that like you can multitask because you know like the bits that you need to do don't require a lot of focus and you also need to be spending time doing other things like helping out with Ruga or going to get dinner or something. Which, so that was quite nice to hear. I guess that doesn't really mean much, does it? Because my wife could always be biased. She could always, you know, just hype me up. She's my hype man. <laughs> Alright. So I thought we'd go through some of the other topics I, I didn't touch on. One of them was what I saw this morning actually, so it's Saturday today. And it was a video of a guy talking about his life growing up and how he became a fentanyl addict and the things he had to go through in his life. Like one of the things was, I promise you this is leading somewhere. One of the things was he grew up, I'll use his words, suck and F next, like while he was in the bed next to her. And I just think, I'm like, this is kind of, it's weird and it's very selfish. I'm gonna turn this back around onto me. But like that kind of thing, I just can't, I can't fathom. I can't begin to understand what that does to a person other than it just like fucks them up. I, I, I can't imagine how a person can do that to their child. I just, yeah. But I think what I was saying out of that is, the other day I was mentioning some of the, let's just call them like challenges in life. Some of the things that like I found difficult that I feel I've have made me, some of the setbacks that have made me a stronger person and, and given me the ability to deal with ups and downs in my life. But like those things are absolutely, like they shouldn't even enter your mind in a comparison against the kind of things that other people have to go through. Which then got me thinking about everything in life being, we have to take everything in its own perspective. Like we see, like let's say Justin Bieber, I think he's a, a pretty good example actually. We look at the, th what was it recently? There was a thing with Selena Gomez, Hailey Bieber and Justin Bieber. And he went to an award ceremony with Hailey Bieber dressed in like yellow Crocs, a hoodie that was like tied up and done up in a bow here over his head. And everyone, started coming to this conclusion that actually he's just this big baby, like a very immature baby. And 
Like while from the outside, yes, it looks like that. None of us have any idea what that guy went through. He has lived a life that none of us will ever even understand, never come close to understanding. You have no idea what that does to a person. You have no idea the backstory to that day or whatever went on, none of it. And yet we sit here and we judge these people for absolutely no reason other than what, entertainment? It's just a guy who's grown up in a world that no one else has grown up in, no one else understands, and he's just had to deal with it, and then he gets judged and has to live with that judgment of everyone else who has no idea what he's been through and has no, yet yeah, doesn't understand it. Isn't that... But I, <laughs> the point to all of this is that I will say things... <laughs> now I'm going to compare myself to a, a child of a mother that used to... S anyway... There are things that I will say that will that I may not like flesh out the thought fully and may sound disgraceful because there are some things that I feel very strongly on and I may not uh, cover all of the considerations when I say it at that time. And even so, there may be things that I think I feel very strongly about and there's something I haven't considered and someone could mention it, it could be a comment, it could be something I do in real life and people, someone says something and I'm like, oh my goodness, I've been wrong this whole time because I have not considered all the information. Does that mean that I'm a bad person? No, it means I did my best, because I do try and think through the different things that get me to a decision, but it just means that there was some information or experience in my life that I didn't know about. But now that I know about it, I'm able to bring that into my decision-making process and decide where I want to go with that. Side note, my sister-in-law calls these, gives me, they say they gives me fluid legs because they're, they're fleece, they're fleece lined <laughs> sweatpants. So they're just huge and they make me look like I've just got a couple of liters of liquid just hanging on me. <laughs> what a segue. Didn't see that one coming, did you? What was the next topic? The next topic was... Uh, I thought I wrote down way more than this. Oh, maybe I'll... Oh, okay, well, there's just one... I was driving to get the new battery for my car. Yes, yes, no, two days, yesterday, two days ago. And <clears throat> I, I don't know how so much happened at this one intersection, but there's a... I'm coming up to a, I would say a T-junction. It's more like a plus junction. So you have the main road, and then you have a road coming out of the neighborhood, and then on the other side, a road that goes into a school. And I'm coming out of the neighborhood onto this like semi-main road. And I come to a stop, like a little further back than normal because there's a kid that's going for a run to cross the road. And he's running to cross the road and the car that's turning into the neighborhood doesn't see him, almost hits him and wipes him out. Anyway, I'm like, I'm watching all this unfold, hoping that they see each other. They don't see each other, neither of them, like the driver nor the kid running, they don't see each other, but they manage to miss each other. And then next, there's a group of these three young girls that are, <laughs> that are then walking across the road in front of me. And one of them's like swinging around a, a Coke bottle, just a bottle of pure cocaine. No, she's just, <laughs> she's just swinging around a Coke bottle and that then fires off into the road as she's let go of it. And you can see in her eyes, she's like trying to work out, does she go for it, does she not go for it? And it's, a, it's school, like school's coming out time, hence why there are so many kids. And I can see her like deciding, should I go for it, should I not go for it? I was the hero, I jumped out of my car, I, I stopped three cars with my body, saved her life. 
uh, that's what went through my head. Um, instead, she actually made a really good decision of not to go out in the road. And she decided that actually she would leave it in the road. Like she wanted it. You could see she wanted to go and get it. But she decided to leave it because obviously, like I would guess her parents taught her like not to go and get anything in the road because there were more cars coming. So I reversed my car, parked it, got out, and I shouted down to her, like, excuse me, would you still like your drink? And she said, oh, yes, yes, please. So I ran out into the road, knight in shining armor, I know, got the drink and chased after her to like give it back to her. But you know what was, what is, is super weird about this is that I felt weird for talking to like a young girl. Like I felt that, I, this, I don't know if this is completely on me. I feel like we live in a time where this kind of like weird stuff happens where people are following little girls around and whatever. And I was like, in my head, I'm doing everything I can <laughs> to make sure that someone doesn't, isn't watching from a window somewhere and thinking, oh, what's this guy about to do? Kind of like when you take your dog for a walk and they poop and you've forgotten dog bags and you have to hope, like you, you imagine, you play it off like there's someone watching from a window somewhere. And so you're kind of playing that game of, oh yeah, it's right here, it's like three foot from that tree, from the path, getting all the freaking quantum dynamics of it, just so that they get an understanding that you will be coming back for it. I don't know. And then, this is something that I should probably not leave my mouth. There were then three, three black kids, two older ones and a younger one in front, and it looked like the two older ones, so they were walking in a, a three like this, like this, young kid at the front, two at the back. And like it was pretty obvious that they were brothers walking their younger brother home from school. And like in my head, I wanted to make the joke to the little, to the younger kid of like, oh, are these guys bothering you? Like playing into that, um, that societal thing of, this isn't meant racist whatsoever, of black guys following someone. And I'm, I know it's like, it's so weird. Obviously I didn't say anything because imagine trying to explain that and if they didn't get the joke and all around it's just weird. Like, yeah, like even having said this, this should have just stayed in my head, shouldn't it? Bloody hell. Bloody hell. All right. I've got to get a screwdriver, don't I? All right, while I do that, I'm gonna, I saved some videos that I thought would be good to talk through. Essentially, it's some like motivational video of successful people act before they think they're ready. And this is something that kind of crippled me, like has crippled me a lot of times in my life. It's this idea that, no, you can't, you can't start on it yet because like you don't have this in place. Like starting these vlogs, for example, I have, I've told part of this story, but I just remembered another part of the story. One part of the story was, the first part is that it's, th it's like three o'clock on a, I, I don't know, I can't remember what day, but it was late in the week. I think it was a Friday. And I had this idea to do these videos, like the kind of like low key videos. And I thought, okay, well you can't, you can't start now. There's only an hour left in the day. But instead I thought, you know what, screw it, let's do it. Let's try it right now. And I remember thinking at the time, well, now's also stupid because you leave to go home in a few days and you're going home for like five or six days. And I didn't want to 
do these videos while I was there. And everything, everything lined up to tell me that I shouldn't do this, that I shouldn't start yet, that I should wait until I came back and start until I had a fresh day, like wait until I had a fresh day. But actually all of that is just an excuse because at the beginning, like you don't know if it's gonna work. What, what's, what's wrong? Like even if on that first day, for example, between three and four o'clock, I start filming and I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do. I didn't have to post the video. I didn't have to do anything with it. I could have just been like, oh, okay, well, turns out I need to, like, it gives me more of an idea of things I need to think through beforehand. And the point I'm making out of that is that if you don't just start doing it, it's a pretty average point, isn't it? You'll never be ready. So if you don't just start now, you're already failing at the first hurdle. And honestly, that was quite a pivotal, even at 20, 32, 20, even at 32 years old, that was a pretty pivotal moment for me. That realization of, no, just get it done right now. Don't pause on it, do it. And I, we live in a time, like I've seen a lot of stuff recently about kids or parents and like millennial parents maybe with kids. It wouldn't be millennial parents, would it? It would be the generation above us. I don't know what that is. Or maybe like older millennials and you have all these iPad kids that if they don't have their iPad, they can't, they don't know what to do with themselves. And you see it like on Fridays, Rugi gets to watch cartoons. Um, but on any other day, if we let him watch it for a bit, like today we put up a, a new light fixture in the kitchen. I've got another one to do over there, the boob light. And it's a vaulted ceiling. So I'm, lit I'm, on, I'm on top of the ladder that we have because we don't have a big enough ladder and Shay is helping me. And she's like passing me things and whatever. And our best option is to leave him to hang out watching TV. Just like watching, not cartoons, but um, like an educational type show. Like in those times we think it's okay, but you do see that whenever you like turn off that TV, I'd say for the most part, he's pretty good. Uh, of being like, like we, we tell him to say bye, so he says bye, and then we shut the TV off and he's okay with it. But there are times that he'll be in a mood about it, he'll like throw a tantrum, and you realize that we live in a world right now, or those kind of things help you realize that we live in a world where we get anything and everything we want immediately. And if you give a kid an iPad or a kid TikTok and get them hooked on that, like you just think what that does to their brain as they go through life. And I think the millennial generation, we are the only generation that grew up, like I'd say before we became adults, grew up with, grew up offline and online. Like we had, like school, like edu normal school, with no internet, no phones, none of that stuff. And it was, we would just go out and play like football, soccer for hours on a weekend. Like that's what we would do. Like we would call the home phone. <laughs> we would meet down at the playing fields and we would just play all weekend long. We would go to the shop and we would walk everywhere. We wouldn't drive. I mean, it, bear in mind this is England versus the US. I understand that you have to drive a lot in the US. But like there was also no thought of the dangers of people in public. Now, does that mean that those dangers didn't exist back then? Like what? Maybe just under 20 years ago, 15 years ago? 
between 15 and 20 years ago? No, I'm sure they existed. But because of the lack of social media and the spreading of information, it just wasn't, like, people just didn't discuss it as a commonplace thing. And so we walked everywhere. Like, we would go out for, we would go for nights out and the city's like 20 minutes away. And if we finished drinking too late or whatever it was, somewhere between like 3 and 7 a.m., so after the taxis had stopped going and before the train started running, like public transport started running again, we'd be walking that flipping however many miles that is. But like now, you can't imagine doing that, can you? No, you can't, Oliver. But yeah, I think something that, I don't know, like Shay and I will never do. This, I, I'm, not, I'm not stating this as if like parents that do get their kids iPads are just bad parents. I think there's different styles of parenting and however you want to do that. But we, we don't want to do that. That is not the type of parenting style we want. We want like hands on, we want to spend, we want to be dedicated and spending as much time as we can with our kids. And not like putting them in front of the TV or giving them a, a phone to go and play with. Wow, Oliver, you're such a good person. Mm. Well, that's not quite, that's not quite right, is it? I haven't figured that one out very well. I guess I need to fold it again. <coughs> What's the next video I saved? I found a thread on... Not that one. I'm sorry, did you... Uh, there is. I've got a lot of saved in here. Oh wait, collections. Here we go, pod blog topics. Oh yeah, here's one. It was Ninja talking about the type of creator you are. I think this is very important as becoming as becoming a creator becomes a uh, a much more sought after, let's say, career choice. Many people outside of the realm think that it's a very easy job, and I'm not, my co next comment isn't going to be, no, it's so difficult. But, where, where was I going with it? Uh, that's right. My comment was going to be that if you're not playing if you don't know exactly who you are and willing to be exactly who you are, like let's say me in these videos, then you will be playing a character. You'll be playing a character that you think people enjoy. And depending on how you're able to manage that role, you could very easily get sucked into this world where you spend your life playing the character or the person that you know people online like. And if you're able to differentiate between that and who you are in real life, awesome, that's, that's good. <laughs> but if you, yeah, if you aren't able to, what happened, oh, this, I hate, I hate shit like this that just doesn't fit. I don't know why I'm bothering. Cause it's all good, it's, it's going to get thrown away anyway, isn't it? Okay, I'll put you there.
There we go. Um, yeah, I think it's quite daunting for, for someone to think I want to be a content creator. It's quite a daunting thought to try and figure out you, you have to figure out all these things about the type of person you want to be, how you want to make content. And seeing what you see online. Like this is such a new industry that it's been done by, you know, let's, let's try and think of all of the really, the top famous people who are big. Like there can't be that many. I'd say I could probably name 20 and I, it starts with like David Dobrik, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, KSI. Oh goodness. And then the new ones like Ninja, Jinxy, Kai Sinat, uh, the side men guys, the, the side boys. <laughs> Those lot. And then you start to wonder like these young kids, they're like, do I be who I am? Or do I be someone that they are? And these kids are then, I know like we all grow up in these different cliques that we, you know, oh, I'm an idiot, aren't I? It's a good job I gave up on putting it back in this bag because the bag wasn't even designed for it. Yeah. The, these kids are growing up being the same thing as their friends all around them. But if they're following these people they see online who are successful and making lots of money, do they stop becoming, it's like an in interjection into the dynamic of the world like how the world has worked. We are now so connected with people from different walks of life and different experiences that someone who grows up in South London could live their life watching someone like Logan Paul and start growing up in the, in the eyes of, not in the eyes of Logan Paul, but in the, Like they, they start to base themselves on this Logan Paul type of personality, right? And you see, do you see where I'm going with this disruption? I don't know if that like, is even a thing. Maybe I'm just thinking way too deep. This also isn't a thought I've had before 60 seconds ago, but it's kind of an interesting one. I think that's everything in this bag. I think I just tape it up and go. Yeah. All right, well, you've listened to me babble on for a little bit. Um, I think my only other comment is, I, I don't know what's going on with the sauna videos on TikTok. As I showed you yesterday, metrics are really good. Even on the third video, even on, let's see the- fourth video. Yeah, not as good on the fourth video, actually, surprisingly. Weirdly. Uh, but yeah, the views, like, you went from 1.1 million, and then the metrics of the next video are way higher, and you only are at 50k, just, again, relative in comparison. Then the video after that, again, very good in metrics, is only at 18K. And then the video I posted nearly 24 hours ago now is only at 6K. So that's not ideal, is it? <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'll uh, leave you be. It's Monday for you, isn't it? So I hope you have a good rest of the week. See you tomorrow.